Joining us now is uh, actress and dancer Ronali Shimon. Uh, you are based currently in Tel Aviv, Ronan. And a uh, few days ago, when you were speaking to my peers in the Indian media, uh, you were very, very vocal about the support that Bharat has offered. But let me ask you, 17 days into this Israel-Hamas conflict, and uh, the dimensions seem to be opening new fronts. The Hezbollah on one side, the Houthis on the other side. NATO now using uh, Cyprus as a jump off point. Things are just escalating. You're right in the thick of all of this. What's going through your mind? Wow, what a wide ranged question. Um, what is going through my mind is, um, first of all, the I think us as, as people in Israel are now, it's been 17 days after the attack um we're still grieving our dead we're still dealing with um the horrors of what was done to us um now we're starting to get focused um and uh and do the mission that is now we are called upon to do which is to protect ourselves and to bring the hostages back that is the most important thing for all of us as a country. But to bring the hostages back, you have to hold back on the ground assault because there is pressure on Israel as a nation to allow negotiations with a terrorist outfit that is Hamas, which has got 126 hostages from 36 different countries. Does that seem to be a fair equation for you? I think the word fair should not be used anymore with this whole situation. The word fair died on October 7th, 2023. In all of Israel, in all this, you know, we've been in this war for uh, 70 years with, with, with Gaza. Um, we have been bombed, we have been terrorized in many, many ways. What was done to us on October 7th changed the rules of war because this is the this was a, a sadistic attack on civilians on innocent civilians uh, that were kidnapped from their home uh, that were butchered in a, a music festival um, you know with that intention at heart with the sadistic intention of hurting innocent babies and women and elderly the word fair should not be used anymore from now on. I agree with you. But the Palestinian Prime Minister has accused Israeli Defense Forces of murdering babies in the Gaza Strip. That's the conversation or that's what's being said. Do you believe that over 17 days, what Israel went through on the 6th and 7th of October has somehow been forgotten or is there an attempt to totally broad brush that or wipe that under the carpet. I think what the uh, Hamas is doing, and they've been doing it for years, but of course, after uh, October 7th, they've been doing it more. Um, and that is to, uh, they have adopted the uh, victim tactic, which is to, it's known all over the world that they are using their civilians as human shields. That is, very different tactic than to protect them. They cannot play the victim when they uh, put rockets and their missile launchers inside hospitals and schools and mosques. Um, this whole tactic of, of, of saying, um, you know, casualties of war is a terrible, terrible thing. And as I said before, the, the October 7th, what was done to us was not war. They have infiltrated, they sneaked into Israel, into civilians' homes. Israel, you know, we've been uh, hearing a lot the word um, proportions in the past 17 days. Um, and I keep saying the same thing. How on earth can people say proportion to what was done to us? Because I can promise you with every fiber of my being that there is no one Israeli soldier or civilian 
that would do what these animals, devils, have done to us. No Israeli would go in, sneak in the early hours of the morning to people's homes, to behead babies, to rape women, to kidnap Holocaust survivors, and then to have them paraded and celebrated in the Gaza Strip. That would never happen with Israeli people. Somewhere with this uh, hostage situation, are you worried that the Hamas as a terrorist outfit actually gets the bargaining chip? As an Israeli, as somebody who's borne the brunt of their uh, barbarism and their brutality, how do you see this situation evolving? How do you see a solution coming? I'm sorry, can you uh, repeat the question? I don't think I fully understood. I'm sorry. For someone like as barbaric as the Hamas, who has it in their doctrine to wipe out Jews, that's in their doctrine. They are but holding... It's Jews, we are just the beginning. The doctrine is to eliminate everyone who doesn't believe in their doctrine who doesn't um, uh, sacrifice, uh, um, um, celebrate death, right? They don't even believe in, in, in this lifetime. So, sorry, continue. So it's not just the Jews. It, the West is next. The, 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 the actual meaning of the West is next is actually true. But go ahead. Sorry. So it's in their doctrine to wipe out anybody who doesn't follow their path. Yes. Let's put it that way. And it starts with the wiping out of Israel and Jews. It starts from there. They are the ones who are being negotiated with. They are the ones who have hostages and who are saying that we will kill the hostages if Israeli Defense Forces bomb us. Uh, uh, what's the solution to this? I will tell you what the solution to this. Only if all of the free world will stand unite in front of this terror organization and will apply the pressure in, with every means possible that is the only way that we have a chance to bring the hostages back that should be the the sole thing that everybody concentrates on and it should be a humanitarian aim of the global community of the world because if we will not unite for this right now it will happen again you make a fair point, but the America wants IDF to hold off its ground result because they want more time to negotiate. Israel, on the other hand, is worried that Hamas may unleash chemical weapons on Israeli citizens. It's, it's a situation which is very uh, unique uh, or tough, especially for a nation that is Israel and its people. And somewhere, even though Israel has very clearly delineated our fight is not with Palestinians, but with Hamas as an entity. The global narrative is overlapping. Palestine and Hamas somewhere get overlapped. And this is not an easy spot for you as an Israeli or anybody who's against terror to be. Yes. Yes, it's, it's, uh, it's unique. It is complicated. And I'll tell you why. We don't... Th th there was an effort as a human being to not combine the two together, uh, Palestinians and Hamas. And yet we've been dealing this for, for 70 years. And I think what is very difficult to comprehend is when you see the pictures of, you know, at the end of the day, it's the Gazans people who have elected Hamas, who have been uh, living under the Hamas occupation for 18 years. And for 18 years, you can see them celebrate Hamas kidnapping, butchering, raping, beheading babies. We need to remember that when we address the Gazan people. I don't, I've never seen it anywhere in the world where an Israeli woman being kidnapped into the Gaza Strip being pulled by her hair with blood between her legs obviously being raped and tortured and is being uh celebrated in the streets this is it's just very hard for me to um 
to even describe it because my 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 human mind my imagination won't let me go there but there are videos of exactly that of the Gazan people celebrating rape beheading of babies kidnapping and all the horrors that Hamas is doing so I think I think that the the human will is to separate them and I think reality as we can see it today is um, it's more complicated than that nowadays it, it points otherwise is what you're trying to say but uh, where what next because the longer this draws on more fronts for Israel and more trouble for Israel as a nation and Israeli people because war always brings with it economic hardship along with other issues and we're already seeing the dimensions extend beyond West Bank and the Gaza Strip. Hezbollah is getting active. We had the Houthis attempt something which the Americans intercepted. So it could adopt far larger greater scales uh, very soon. So where do you see this going? Because you're in the thick of it all. Is there a plan to try and curtail it and to try and finish it off faster rather than getting into a long drawn affair? I'll tell you something. I think it is interesting to to see that Hamas has the opportunity to have Gaza operating again for the Gazan people, for the Palestinians, if they were only to release the hostages. The fact that they're not doing that is only showing how much they care about their people. That's one. And second of all, we're fighting for our existence. And this never happened before. Where we where we fight, this is this is our time to fight for our existence. And we will do it at all costs. We will. I can sense the determination. Um Bharat as a nation has been fully supportive of Israel and its defense and its fight against terror. We've also taken a position where we've extended humanitarian aid to the Palestinian people, the civilians. How do you see this approach and the support that's come from Bharat? I would only hope that with the effort to help innocent civilian, that it will only get to the to the innocent civilian. My fear, which was which has been proven times and times before, is that the humanitarian aid to the Gaza Strip was stripped away by Hamas. And my only hope is that that won't be the case this time. But you know, we've been surprised this time in so many ways and uh, they, have, uh, they, uh, we, they have just proven to us, first of all, that they're ISIS, that their doctrine is just a murderous, sadistic, doctrine to the to the whole world and uh, they are not to be trusted they are lying and of course they're lying if you're able to kill your own civilians in order to to victimize yourself in order to win the media war then 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 you're able to lie and so i'm i'm very i'm hoping with every uh uh human will that I still have in my body that um, the humanitarian aid will not be exploited by Hamas this time. I understand why there is a skeptic in you which believes that this with a good intent, whatever help goes, it will be used for a particular devious purpose. My final I question. I understand they have done it. <laughs> the, the minute that the, the minute that we um, withdrew from Gaza, we left such rich agriculture when we drew back from Gaza. This could have been the Mediterranean heaven. And all they've done with the agriculture, which was water, which had a um, uh, uh, um, plants um, infrastructure, they ruined it all and used the material to build rockets to kill people. And so, yeah, I have very little trust. I get your point. Uh, Israelis from all over the world are actually signing up. They're leaving their positions, coming back to Israel to sign up for the reserves and somewhere help in however they can in this fight. How are you helping the cause? What are you doing? 
I know some of your peers have actually drawn up, joined many organizations like Brothers in Arms, and some of the reserve forces, etc. So I wanted to understand how are you pitching in? Um, from the beginning of the war, and it's not just me, it's all the civilians in Israel and all of the Jews around the world um, have been called to the mission. Um, I partic particularly volunteered immediately to help get um, supplies to soldiers that were called for reserves, uh, whether it be food or uh, military su supplies, everything that was needed on ground. Um, and I was um, going to visit people from um, Kfar, Kfar Aza uh, and Beri and all the survivors, as many as that I could to just hug them and, and listen to them and share their sadness and, and grief. Uh, I've been meeting soldiers that were injured and I've been talking our, our national wound and our and this upcoming war to the world, like talking to you, like talking to our allies all over the world. And I have to say how grateful I feel that you guys are standing unite with us at this darkest time that we've been experiencing for the past. Yeah. Well, if it's the fight against terror, every single uh, Indian is with you. Uh, and outfits like these, which are xenophobic in nature, which are barbaric and brutal, and have no consideration for human life, well, they don't, uh, they deserve to be destroyed. But along with that, it's a long drawn affair. Like you said, it's quite complex. It's not as easy as it seems. So final word, Ronali Shimon, before we say thank you to you. Any appeal, anything that you'd like to say to the people of the world via our network? I would like, you know, I would like to ask for people to be well educated, uh, not to be intellectually lazy and to stand with the good side of history, because now more than ever, it's crucial. And we hear the loud voices that are with us. But louder than that, we hear the silence of the people who are not standing with us. And um, as painful as it is, we will prevail. And uh, with the help of people like you and our fellow Indian people from India, uh, my beloved country, um, we will prevail. Could I say amen to that? Our prayers with you and your people, with the people of Israel. Thank you very, very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.